is it possible to keep logging out of the main database and leave that as a configuration option to keep performance at optimal levels? For example, can we have our logs go to a Otter log database or a different thing other than the main database? Um, so that's a that's a really good question. And, and actually with Otter, it's something that we're starting to think we might need, but one of the things that we're trying to do, I mean, the first way to answer this is to say, we are capturing a tremendous amount of logging data inside of our product. So when you have Buildmaster that, you look at like a execution that, those logs are really detailed. Otter, it's sort of the same thing, except for the thing that's different about Otter and Buildmaster is Otter is running a lot more frequently. It will do some of these checks almost once an hour. So it will run an execution against the server every hour to make sure that the configuration is what it's supposed to be. It will run that execution per server. So when you have hundreds or thousands of servers, you're already seeing you have got thousands of executions per hour times 24 times, times, times. You get a lot, a lot of logs. So obviously what we do is we have log retention policies that automatically purge some of those, uh, some of those old ones. So that's that. But even with all that, there's still a tremendous amount of data. Now, one of the things though, that's great about the database technology that we use, specifically SQL Server, is that it is amazing with large data sets. For example, I've seen and heard of SQL databases that are in the five to 10 terabyte size and perform just fine. So one of the things that we should keep in mind is that SQL Server is not the slow thing. What's probably happening if there are performance problems is that we just need to find where those performance bottlenecks are and basically do better queries, find ways to optimize our queries internally. I don't think dumping everything into a separate database, I mean, it's just basically, it's a different database, it's still gonna be slow, so we wanna, we wanna, do, we wanna take care of that. The one consideration is that the free version of SQL Server doesn't, has like only a limit of 10 gigabytes or something like this for the database size. That's still a lot, that's still a lot of data. So I think that's just where being smart about retention policies will make sense. But yeah, I'll, I'll put it this way. When there are performance problems at any aspect of our products, we, we wanna fix those. Our products are supposed to be snappy. There should not be seconds to load any page in our software at all. It should be almost instant. And what happens a lot of the times is we don't we don't operate at the scale that our customers do internally. Maybe we have a hundred or so applications. I don't know. We have a hundred applications, a handful of users of our of our tools. Some of our customers have hundreds of users, thousands of applications. We don't we don't internally know what that scale is. And then the other thing is everyone's using the product slightly differently. I see some. I've heard some people are like, yeah, we use Buildmaster to run a, a scheduled job every hour. I was like, well, that. That's not what Buildmaster was designed for, but and I can see since you're using it that way, you're, you're coming up with the problem. So mm. when we hear about those those cases, actually we had a we had a very very interesting use case in Progit where somebody said, I, I go to this tab, the deployments tab in Progit, and I am seeing this takes seconds to load. I heard that I'm like. Well, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, do you have a problem with the database? And they're like, well, we have about 10,000 records. I'm like, how is that possible? Why would you have 10,000 deployment records? That that makes zero sense whatsoever. Uh, right? this, this is how where a package, uh, where a certain package was deployed, maybe 10 times for a packet. I mean, how many times? This isn't supposed to be like a global registry where you have all of every user in your organization. No. Well, it turns out they were, I don't, they were using that feature in an unanticipated way. And they were dumping data in that to sort of capture uh, not deployments. So we wanted to know where is a package deployed to. What they were using it to capture was, uh, they, they were using it to capture what applications depend on this package. So sort of reverse dependencies. And we saw that and we're like, you know, we are not gonna improve the page performance because it actually performs fine. What we're gonna do is create a new feature to accommodate that use case. And that's gonna be the best way to solve that. So I go back to when we hear heard about that uh, hourly job usage in Buildmaster, we say, well, <clears throat> okay, if that's what the use case is, let's find out the best way to do that with Buildmaster. Otter, maybe Otter's a better solution for you because Otter runs jobs a lot. Buildmaster, sure you can do it, but 
it's really designed to, it's not a generic job running tool. But in any case, we, we ended up improving the scheduled jobs in Buildmaster, so there is a way to do that a lot better than there used to be. And that's really the importance of sort of interacting and talking to users is, this is the only way we learn about it. If there's a frustration in the product, I wanna know about it because we have the way to either improve the performance, you know, make, the, make it a better user experience, or it's possible you're using the product in a way we never anticipated. And if that's the case, let's adapt the product to work better for you.